Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG. What happens when you mix radioactive waste household pets and Chuck Norris prior to him going batshit insane? That's right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, baby, and Platinum Games, fresh off the Transformers transformation into gaming, decided that combining one of the slowest creatures known to man with ninjas and throwing them into a video game with all manner of misguided genetic freaks was a perfect follow-up to that title. Let's see if they were right, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a worthy addition to the fiction, or if not every cartoon needs to be made into a video game. Seriously though, where's my mask cartoon? As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from Platinum for the Xbox One, PC, and PS4. Shark overlords, college level pizza eating, and the world's strongest argument against a game being locked at 30 frames per second. And because we're talking about frames per second, let's talk about graphics. Let's get this out of the way. Every version, including the PC, is locked at 30 FPS. That's sort of like buying a fucking Ferrari and putting a big block of wood under the gas pedal and naming it stupid. Not every game has to be the fanciest thing in the world, and not everyone is going to have the most robust graphics card in their PC. But guess what? They might. However, it won't matter because you could have this thing at 800 by 600 or at 4K, and you're still going to be locked at 30 frames per second. Hey, I got an idea. Let's make a really quick Twitch game and basically lock it down at half frame rate. Now, that being said, at times, TMNT doesn't look bad with its somewhat telltale version of graphical line drawing and some excellent effects at times, like the immersive rain and one of the city's more drab overall levels. Also, animations are excellent, whether you're smashing the IQ of an already questionably intelligent bad guy who's half shark, or you're using samurai swords to cut out the evil hearts of rock men. In the end, every animation for the multitude of moves is magnificent and probably one of the best parts of this game. Team up with another turtle and force the enemies into a dance-off as music begins to play, rainbow colors rain down, and the enemies start grooving in place. Much of it is actually really, really well done. But you know what? We just can't have good things all the time because sadly, the locations are not. For the most part, they're rote, boring affairs in locations like a city, which could have had the ability to be interesting and at least partially intriguing, look like someone trying to come up with different names for the four same pizza shops. While not necessarily low resolution in the texture work in those levels, it's also not excellent, and that gives a decidedly drab look to a game based on characters that are pretty much anything but drab. As a package, while the effects and animations are actually top-notch, the frame rate isn't. And even though it's supposed to be, it's also not always smooth. Even on the GTX 980, during some of the cutscenes, it was dropping down to like 27 frames per second. And it's really bottom of the barrel level design, and it sort of sucks the fun out of you like you stayed over at April's house after too much sake. Sound, music, and voice. I was born for this! What could they possibly have to gain from flooding these sewers? I just don't get it. Yo, that's fine by me. They want a war? We'll give them a war. And of course, sound is up first. This is really hit and miss. During battle, it's not bad, and there are a number of times when I was able to discern what was occurring despite the fact that four very adult, man-sized turtles were doing their best to hurdle their enemy into a future where he didn't exist. Most combat effects are right on in a cartoon way and do a good job staying away from one another or overlapping. However, during the cutscenes, the sound effects for things like movements are atrociously overdone, resulting in what can only be described as the first time the Ninja Turtles wore newspaper for clothing. Every single move creaks and crunches or swishes and scratches, and it becomes annoyingly obvious whenever anyone moves or makes a gesture. Not sure why it's that overdone, but it seems like it's a bug, possibly? It's just really, really bad. As a package, the sound was okay, but in the end, I really would have liked a tiny bit more variation in the battle effects, and there were those cutscene issues. Music. Okay, this I like, and it's not going to be for everyone, and I get that. First, it sounds like they hired a Motley Crue tribute band. Let's just call them the Troublesome Club. Hard drum rock solos mixed with a wailing guitar that does a really excellent job reminding you of the time space in which Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles actually even came out. It's not going to win awards, but honestly, it fits more than it doesn't here, and it's something that sort of brought me back to the time when these original cartoons were on. Pretty good music, and it fits with the combat that's going on. Voice. 
Honestly, here again, I have no complaints at all. While some jokes fell flat, so did the cartoons and comic books. The characters act their part for the most part, and the overabundance of California exuberant speech is here in spades. It still sounds a bit like Fast Times at Ridgemont High, where you replace Sean Penn with your pet turtle Sparkly, and they do what they can with what they have. I would say, as a package, good voice. Gameplay. This should be no surprise, as with many Platinum games, the title's about running through locations with a unique slant on a particular intellectual property, unlocking new moves and various skill sets being required to get the higher grade as battles progress. That's what you wanted me to say, I bet. Well, in TMNT, it is that, but it's also absolutely terrible when it comes to holding up a candle, even to the somewhat light Transformers title that came recently. While you can unlock new moves by fighting particular enemies, as well as wear ninja charms that have all sort of adjustments on your skills, and also equip items that reflect particular things that you've done, like sort of physical achievements. In the end, it all feels like it needed at least another year to bake. Each level begins with a cutscene and then throws you into an already mentioned fairly boring location. Enemies warp into being and otherwise no one exists in the worlds for the most part but you and them. You have a special vision button that's like ninja homing radar which is sort of like a pigeon's ability to get back home except this one is for ninjas so it usually leads you to the next bad guy. Every so often a mission pops up that has you killing particular bad guys unicycling giant balls across the city which sounds like a hilarious after school special but here it's absolutely poorly executed with bad controls and a an inherent ability at all times to show how poor the camera is with tracking in this title. When battling characters in solo mode, you can order the other turtles to protect you, stay in place, or follow you, and a couple other things. And in the end, that really just means they're going to do whatever the fuck they want. While they do resurrect you when you're shell-shocked very well, the moment you're done, everyone runs to the farthest reaches of any location like they don't want to admit that they absolutely hate one another. Multiplay, though, is much, much better. When it comes to battle, the AI just wades in, gets knocked out in seconds, and requires almost constant help. People are actually smart, and that's the difference here. Artificial intelligence versus real. Never have I seen AI this bad, and never have I seen it so easily displayed in a Platinum title, though. Now, while TMNT does have Platinum requisites like unique weapon combos, combo break, and the upgrade system, the charm system, which has a lot of parallels to the Transformers game and a good deal of other stuff, it's the fact that it is so haphazardly implemented and rough that hurts the title, and the fact that regardless, this is easily the worst level design in any Platinum game, and I get that in the end maybe they're not known for that, but this is atrocious. My assumption is that this game was timed and needed to be out in an exact date, and who knows the budget, but if that's true, a couple good, very linear, but open style combat levels would have been absolutely incredible with this gameplay style. Instead, you get a fantastically boring city level that has you hang gliding around, rolling giant purple balls into random circles that do nothing to be explained. You see, that's the thing. In past titles, these guys have made the fiction fit the form, and even if something was oddly intertwined, the game did its best to combine them and sort of at least explain it. For example, the weapon system in Transformers, something that didn't exist in the cartoons. Here, though, this same thing is tried. For example, shoveling down pizza in your hideout to up your health level before returning to the battle. It feels like it fits, but just barely. And in fact, it's shockingly so abrupt that when it happens, you're quite literally sitting there going, what do I do? Regardless, when you do go back, it's going to be another level where things don't fit at all. And after a bit of time, you will remember just how damn limiting it is to only have a total of two attacks and four specials in a game about ninjas. That's like asking a martial artist not to use their feet. Lastly, boss battles run the gamut from holy shit, now this is fun, to oh my god, he has like seven life bars and doesn't do anything else but randomly puke on me and bite me. It's a huge give and take with a couple really unique, really fun standout bosses, but most of them are complete duds. Fun factor. So some levels are fun, some are not. Mostly, they're not. The combat's shallow, some of the most shallow and poorly constructed I've personally seen by Platinum, and yet it's still better than very many titles out there by more prestigious companies. And that's something I think we should remember. We hold Platinum up to a particular level because they've always performed that way. But the fact remains that we see a title like Transformers, which feels less fitting and yet have better overall combat, and is by far more interesting combat than anything here in this title. I mean, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, that somehow makes the entire fiction pretty boring? How is that even possible? That wasn't even expected. Also, the game is only around four hours. Yeah, that's right, and while some of the past games have indeed been short, this is insane when you consider the shoddy state things are in and the fact that even on the harder difficulties where you get more charms but the guys are even more difficult to kill, 
it's actually still much easier to just blast through than any prior title from these guys. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy wait for sale rent or never talk about it again rating scale. This is a wait for a sale. At nine bucks or 19 bucks, this would be a much easier pill to swallow with that really enjoyable multiplayer and you could have some friends jump in. Currently though, it is way too expensive for a rough, fairly pedestrian title that seems far more interested in saying, hey look, we have a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game versus saying, hey look, we have a good Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. That is the one difference between this and Transformers. So as always, hey, if you like the review, maybe check out the Reddit, maybe check out our Patreon, maybe just say hi on Twitter because we do have a Twitter account. Or if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down because you know what? The world is all about free speech and freedom of choice, which is how this game got made. As always, peace out.